All right, so we're going to be adding a two-wire decoder control system to this project. Uh, we've got valve boxes all the way around. Some are already done. Some new ones came along after the original plan. That's one of the reasons you use decoders, not just a large number of stations, because you can change your mind, add stuff on. Wherever this here two-wire path goes, you can snip it, splice in a decoder, add valve control. So as the project grows, the system grows. These are the decoders themselves. The valves are already installed. Our decoders are always supplied with the correct and best waterproof connector for connection to the two-wire path. Now today we're only going to hook up to the two-wire path because there's no power here at the dwelling. So we're going to hook up our stuff to the two-wire path, program it, get it ready to go. We're going to leave the solenoids on the valves hooked up to our battery controllers. So that'll run the irrigation until they get power to the house. Every decoder will have a pair of these. I got a box of bolt connectors in case we have goofs or have to do splices. Prefer to see no more than one splice, three wires per tube. Don't try to double them up and save. We have an assortment here of single and two station decoders on our dual system. Uh, we've got four valves in this box. That's a good opportunity to save a few connectors and we're gonna use a pair of dual two two station decoders. The wires on these are all color coded. We'll sort of box up and uh, clean up our scrap as we go. But all the decoders are the same principle. The most important two wires is red and blue. The red and blue are going to go to the red and blue in the two-wire path. The other colored stations, the black and the yellow, are our solenoid connections. So we're not going to hook those up today, as far as I know. On the pairs, the solenoid pairs, it doesn't matter which of the solenoid wires they go to. Um, they're both red, so one to one and one to the other. This is the two-wire path, and they've done what we like to see. They left us a lot of slack. Normally, we'll ask for about hip high, leave us a little extra wire in the valve box. That's so as the property settles, all this disturbed soil settles in, uh, or in areas where you have frost or expansive soils. As stuff actually moves around over time, it won't pull those splices apart. We want that extra slack. It also makes it easier to work with. So I'm a fan of stripping the wire back, the jacket back, more or less right after it enters the box, and then I can work with the, the much smaller and more flexible pair that's inside here. Loop the extra slack you don't need around, and then you've got a little add-on and a service loop later in the future. Oh, uh, one other thing. These decoders are unprogrammed out of the box. They're set to station size 000. So we're gonna program them. We need power to do that. There's two ways to do it. One is to hook them up right to the controller in the garage there. That doesn't have power right now, but you can program them from that controller. Or you can use our slick handheld device, the ICDHP wireless programmer, which is battery operated and will supply power while we do the programming process. So we'll see this in action a little bit later on. There's the kit. These are the probes we'll use. ICDHP. Greatest thing ever happened to the decoder business. All right. The jacket's pretty easy to strip. Razor knife, don't cut through it. Just score around it. Make a little scratch and bend it till it breaks. It'll snap if I did it enough. We didn't touch a single inner conductor, which is a big no-no in two-wire systems, but we've got the jacket off. We'll cut as much slack as we want for the first decoder, leave a little bit to get to the second decoder, and then this two-wire path will continue on back to the next valve box. So everything's a three-way splice, reds to reds and blues to blues. Controversial part of the procedure. Uh, the waterproof tubes are absolutely required. They are not reusable. What I like to do though, if we're careful about it and we know all the people on our crew, I just put on the wire nut first, keep them up out of the dirt and test everything. Then we go back and apply the goop tubes to make them truly waterproof. You can put them on right now and trust your luck, but if something goes haywire and you gotta redo a connection, now everything's really goopy and slimy because that's silicone gel in there. So we're gonna get our incoming blue our stubby blue, 
and our decoder blue. Line them up. TBRY-6 has a very aggressive wire nut. It's got like little teeth, little shark teeth in there. It will thread itself on to Perton or anything once you get her started. It's got little rocket fins on the outside so you can grip it and spin it down real good. So we got our first three-way splice, all blues, that's what you want to see. And our next one should be all reds. All right. First decoder is in the two wire path. This bad boy. Ah, she's doing that first. Heidi. Come here, open that bag for me, will you? Just pull that open. Hey, it's not a gift, it's a project. I need one of those red and yellow things. Just dump everything out of there. That's a way. Now give me one of those red and yellow ones. I'll need the other one in a minute. Thank you, crew member. Yeah, but later. They're very important. But we set them down over here till we test it. Thank you, crew member. Oops, I dropped. My bad. All right, got a second decoder mostly installed. 